A group of Christian tourists were touring the Holy Land and as they were driving out through the countryside on their tour bus, their tour guide, uh, as they saw many herds of sheep, kept reminding them that a uh, shepherd did not herd the sheep like we herd cattle in the United States, but rather a shepherd always went before the sheep and the sheep would follow the shepherd wherever he went out to pasture. And he had kept emphasizing this and Finally, they came around the curve and the bus had to stop because there were a group of sheep going across the road in front of them. But there behind them with his staff in hand was someone driving the sheep. And of course, the tourists began to remind their tour guide, wait, you've been telling us that the shepherd does not herd his sheep, but rather goes before them. Why is this one back here driving his sheep, herding his sheep? And the tour guide thought quickly and said, Oh, that's not the shepherd. That's the butcher. <laughs> it is a hard metaphor sometimes for us, even though we in the church love the stories of Jesus being the shepherd and the stories of the shepherd. Possibly one of the most favorite scripture passages is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Very, very rarely have I done a funeral to where that was not a part of the funeral service. Read at some part, uh, if not by the request of the family, then by me. I think I've only had one or two when I asked the family, will you want the 23rd Psalm read, where they said no. But it is normally that real comforting sense of peace that it brings to us. That as we hear it read or we hear it sung, that it is a sense of peace. And so Jesus comes to us today in this passage in John's scripture where he says, I am the good shepherd. One of those great I am statements that he makes as he is teaching his disciples. Now, if we had read chapter 9 just before this, we would have seen that that was the story of Jesus healing a blind man. And he heals the blind man when he finds a blind man there begging along the side of the road. His disciples ask a question. Who sinned, this man or his father? And it was easy to understand because in that day people looked at people who were infirmed or people who were ill was because of some sin. And yet here the disciples, because he had been born blind, began to really ask the question. And of course, Jesus begins to talk about that it is really not for us to try to figure that out, but it is rather so he can show the power of God. And so he makes a sense of mud from the clay on the ground and puts it over the man's eyes and then has him go wash it off in the pool of Siloam. And he begins to receive his sight. But now that creates a problem for the Pharisees. For you see, they are very, very comfortable with knowing or going through life just saying people get what they deserve. If they're being punished, it's because they deserve it. And yet here comes Jesus on the scene and begins to talk about what it means to be a good shepherd. Of course, the shepherd motif is one that all of his followers could relate to. They lived out on the countryside. They cared for their sheep. And as the tour guide said, in those days, the sheep followed the shepherd as he would take them from one place where there was grass to graze to another, not letting them to wander the hillside. And at night would put them in a fold and protect them from the wild animals that abounded. And so it was that sense that he comes there to share with them that sense. But he also talks about that the people hear his voice and know him. It is that sense that he reaches out as we are both know the shepherd and the shepherd knows us. And even though maybe we're not used to the metaphor of the sheep today, we can think about what it means to know God and to be known by God. To know where God's voice is and where he is leading us. Not just as individuals but as a group together. 
Where is God leading? How do we hear his voice? One, we must stop sometimes and listen. Amidst all the clutter and noise of the world, we need to stop and listen. Sometimes amidst all the chatter and noise that goes on even within us, we need to stop and listen together. For you see, the sheep went together and stayed together. It was a sense that they all followed, that they all were there together. So it is in a sense that when we are together and listening for God's voice, it is made much clearer to us than when we look to our own individual ways. When we study God's word and discuss it, when we pray together and ask for God to eliminate the scriptures among us, it is much easier there for us to understand the will of God, to listen to that voice that knows us and is known by us, a voice that speaks to us and calls and challenges us to come and to follow and to have that sense of courage to trust God just enough to know that he leads us. And of course, from that 23rd Psalm, we know that it says, not only does he lead us to the green pastures and the still water, but he leads us through those valleys that are also very frightful. It's easy to lead someone into something when they see a good reward there at the end. It is difficult when we hear the voice that is leading us when we're walking through those perilous times of life. But yet maybe that is when we need to stop and hear it the most. In 1993 at the General Assembly of the Christian Church, it met in St. Louis. Uh, that was also a year of floods in St. Louis. But our speaker that year was the Reverend Desmond Tutu, the great leader from South Africa, the Nobel Prize winner. And he was there to speak to the assembly which we were gathered that year with the United Church of Christ and to speak to us jointly there on Sunday evening. But on Sunday morning, as is the tradition at a general assembly, the churches around the city host uh, special guest preachers and the members that are there of the disciples go to these worship services in different churches. And Kathy and I, we were then in Arizona, so we had flown to St. Louis. And when we were looking at where to go on Sunday morning, we saw that an Episcopal church in downtown St. Louis was hosting Reverend Tutu for a special uh, preaching service. Of course, he is Anglican and related to the Episcopal group. And he was going to do services at 8 and I think 10.30. And as I said to Kathy, you know, the 10.30 you know will be greatly crowded and there will probably be no way to get in. If we want to hear Reverend Tutu this morning, we have to get up at 8 and make the 8 o'clock service. Now, it was about a half a mile walk from our motel, uh, hotel. Now, if you know my wife, she does not like to get up early in the morning for anything. <laughs> So I told her finally, well, I'm going to the 8 o'clock. You can stay here if you want, but I'm going. But she reluctantly decided to come with me, and which she was glad she did after our worship service for one of the highlights that day where we were served communion. Uh, they had you divided off in groups. So we were served the wafer in the communion service by Reverend Tutu. Uh, quite a remarkable thing to remember. But I remember a part of his sermon which is great when you consider that is over 25 years ago. The scripture he spoke about that day was Jesus seeking the lost sheep from Luke's gospel, where the shepherd had 100 sheep and 99 are safely in the fold, and he goes out and finds the one and brings it back, and then throws a party and rejoices with his neighbors and friends. It's a prelude, or just to the story of the prodigal son in Luke's gospel. Reverend Tutu talked, he said, as I have visited many churches in all of his travels, he said, in almost every church that I have visited, somewhere in the church, there is a picture of Jesus coming back, holding this little lamb in his arms and bringing it back to the fold. 
As he said, it is a beautiful picture and tugs at our heartstrings and we're all thrilled to think of him coming and bringing back this little lamb. But while all of this beauty and all of these heartstrings that it pulls, he said, the artist really didn't know anything much about sheep. Now South Africa has a lot of sheep for he says, the one that's going to be lost is not the little lamb. It is going to stay close by its mother. And so when the sheep are gathered in, those lambs are going to be there with their mother. If there's one that's going to wander off, it's the old ram. The old mean ram that likes to butt and kind of bully everything around, likes to butt the shepherd. One that thinks that he is above, he is the biggest, he is the strongest, and he can go and do what he wants. He said a true picture of this would be of Jesus bringing this old ram back that is probably bloodied and torn because it's found it in some briar patch caught where it wandered in where it shouldn't have been. But he said that is really the story that it is God who comes to us. The good shepherd comes to us and seeks us out in our own sense of rebellion, in our own sense of wandering away, in our own sense of being this stubborn people that have not listened to his voice and have not followed when the others were and decided we knew what was best. That is the story of Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, even those who are stubborn and wander off and sometimes create issues for me but yet I still love them and I still bring them back into my fold if they will but listen and come to me I am there for them Dr. Tom Long who taught preaching at Princeton for several years told the story of a visit he had to the Soviet Union soon after it had broken up and things had freed up and there he and a delegation of other church leaders went to visit with the Orthodox Church there in Russia and of course as they visited there with the Orthodox Christians they had questions they wanted to say because for years they had lived under the communist reign where they could gather for worship but where everything they did in worship was under the suspicion of the government and where the government would send KGB agents to worship with them to see if they could find any fault in them so that they could punish them for any uprising they thought they might be planning or trying. And Dr. Long, as he talked with them and the others talked with them, they said, how was it to worship when you knew that you could be infiltrated any time you gathered for worship? And he said, oh, the people said, oh, we knew the KGB agents were always there to worship with us. We knew and we could spot them very easily. And they said, we knew because even though they would know the words to the prayers that we would say together or know the words to the hymn that we sang together, there was always something in their voice that just said they were just saying it from rote memory, not from deep within their spiritual connection to God. It was easy to distinguish them. It was easy to tell that they were not really a part of the flock, so we had to be careful what we said. Yes, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am the one that know my sheep and my sheep know me. They hear my voice and they follow. And I know their voice and I listen for them. The issue is for us, what kind of people or sheep are we going to be? Are we really ready to set aside and listen for the voice of God calling to us? Are we really willing to look within ourselves and say, Speak to me, Lord, here I am. Your servant listens. Are we willing to see the world in a new light that does not seek judgment and punishment on all of those round about that we do not understand? As the Pharisees had talked about the blind man. Are we ones that are willing to follow even through the sense 
of ambiguity when we really want clean answers as the Pharisees and his disciples said, who sinned? Why was this one born blind? Who is at fault? At a time when we do not wish to place fault, will we listen for God to share with us the hope and the good news that we are his people and that if we will listen, if we will obey, if we will trust, then God will come to us and make his way known among us. Make his way known into the mission and the ministry and the directions we need to go as the people of God. As the people of God who worship together at Central Christian Church. Let us cry out as we seek to know God. But also let us be responsive as God seeks to lead us. Let us listen to the voice of God wherever it leads and then give us the courage to follow because he leads us even through valleys but he leads us to that which brings hope which brings the goodness of life and the renewal of life. Thanks be to God he knows us and calls us to be his people. Amen.